The Template Method for Fitting Complex Shapes William Hovey Smith, 2014 I'm the author of Extreme Muzzle Loading, and here we do an alteration of one of our muzzle loading rifles. This is Hovey Smith, the Backyard Sportsman, and today I want to tell you about the template method for fitting complex shapes. You know, we outdoorsmen uh, get called upon to do some things that maybe are a little bit out of our reach, but uh, usually we can get around them. Now the conventional thing is to measure twice and cut once. Well, that works just dandy if you happen to have regularly shaped objects. But sometimes you don't. In this case, I had to replace the foam lining of this quiver. It's a crossbow quiver, by the way, in case you hadn't seen one. But uh, it had lost its lining and I needed to replace it. Well, what to do? There are foams as packing materials like this. So uh, what you do is you cut something to shape and you put it in. Now the problem is in the cutting. All right, if you just try to cut a piece and put it in there and cut a little bit more and put it in there and cut a bit more and put it in there, uh, this is usually what happens. I mean one, two, three, four, five attempts and you get something that still did not fit very well. What to do? Well, the idea is, is you take a piece of inexpensive material, cardboard, for example, out of this beer box, and you cut your shape out of it. Well, and you cut it to get it to fit. And, and then you take your template and you put it over your work and you take a thin, sharp knife, and you cut around it, like this. Whoa! The result is, you have a much smoother and better fit than any of this ragged stuff here. Yeah! So this is the template method of fitting complex shapes. Mm -hmm. So you take your template, and you work it with scissors, almost any scissors would do, and then you cut your shape. In this particular case, I had to thin it, but no big problem. Oh, we just cut the synthetic polymer foam thinner. Yeah! Flip, flop. So we could fit it exactly and come up with a good looking product. Now we're also going to fit a cover for a rifle. Uh, to replace a missing patch box. Now I've got a piece of plastic in there right now, but wouldn't it be better to replace it with wood that looked more natural and more authentic and, well, more period on an antique gun? Sure it would! So that's what we're going to do. And as it happens, I have a piece of wood right here. This is some tropical hardwood, it might even be mahogany, that I had been used to back targets with. And as you see, I shoot pretty good. But there is some in the bottom that's solid enough and big enough that I can take and make the cover I need. So I use the polymer that I've got to make a template, and then I cut this to fit, and I have something that'll look better. So we'll show you how to do that one. Well, here is the subject gun. And this happens to be a Brunswick rifle. It was made in Nepal, oh, probably 1840s, 1850s or so, and it is of the British pattern. But it was missing a patch box, so it now has this plastic cover over it that I'm going to replace with a more authentic wooden cover. Hmm? Yeah. And we have taken our wood and we have cut it to a more convenient shape. Now, as it turns out, this is a very thin plywood. And it was produced in a country where there was plenty of wood, but they did not have the wherewithal to make an expensive mill to actually make corrugated paper. Cardboard is expensive to produce, so far as the mill is concerned. It is much less expensive to make a mill to take a veneer 
and then bond it and make plywood. So that's exactly what they did, and that's the reason that this material exists. But uh, it is fragile, and it tends to split out here at the edges. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually put a coat of finish on it, and that will firm up the wood and give it some more strength. So we'll be able to make cleaner cuts and then actually use this as a plastic template to cut our wooden patch box cover. The climactic moment has arrived and we are going to see if we can do what I described with this piece of tropical plywood. All right, take out our cute little brass screws here. Okay, and lift out, and we note that this part here needs to be enlarged a little bit. What I'm using here is a carving set, and this particular tool we'll be using as a scribe, and we'll try to take advantage of any more or less straight edges we have. It gives us good wood. We have a good straight side here. And that looks good on the bottom. So that'll give us a couple of pieces to work on. And I'm going to purposefully make them a little oversized here. And we know we want to round this portion out some more. So we'll see if we can make a scribe right down here. Okay. And this is the delicate part around this edge. This edge fit pretty good on this side, but we need to expand it a bit more around this edge. Not that much, but a bit more. Okay. So that cut us a good round groove that we can see. Now we're going to pad it a little bit with this cardboard. And proceed to use these for chisels. I have a little mallet here. Used for cracking crabs in case you didn't know. And we're going to just proceed to cut along slowly the scribed line. Okay, so this is through the first cut around, so we'll take this again and see if we can do a little deeper. When this was plastic, I was able to use scissors but I don't dare because this wood splits so badly if you put shear forces across it. It is, after all, a plywood. Okay. We're now at the point where we're actually starting to cut out the piece. This edge is opening, and the only thing that's retaining it is here at the tip, which we're working on right now. This plywood is actually more difficult to work 
than a solid piece of wood because it's going to split so bad. Okay, now, now we're free. Now we have the wooden piece removed. You notice this ragged edge right here. So we're going to start working this down with files and rasp and really there's no particular difference except you're working wood and so you would call it a rasp rather than a file. But uh, a half round bastard, yeah that's what it's really calling. And uh, so we're going to start working this edge and smoothing it down until we can get it to actually fit. But I know I've got some to do here. So we're going to work on this for a while and get it right. We fitted it to the rifle for the first time. And a little bit sticks out here over the butt plate so that we can trim. It's a little bit proud right here. So this we can smooth down a little bit. Basically on the sides we just about got it right. Just a little bit needs to come off this edge. But yeah, this is pretty good for a first fit. Well, uh, we're about there. The wood here and here is now a press fit in the stock. And these unsightly areas here were where they actually used chisels to break out this original brass patch box so they could salvage the brass and make cannon or whatever. So uh, this is about as much as I'm going to do with this, except for reciting the brass screws here. And I am going to use some just black shoe polish just to fill these voids uh, and put another coat of finish on here, finish the edges, and then put a coat of furniture wax over it. So that'll make this pretty well a, well, a semi-permanent installation. However, if I ever do find an original patch box or want to put a brass one back on there, you know, this is just easy to pop out and put back right. We have completed our task of using templates to make complex shapes. And how did it work out on the gun? Well, pretty good actually. And here you go. Now, this is not terribly flashy or obvious. But this is, after all, a beat-up and battered military gun that has seen real combat. Yeah, there's sword strikes and other things elsewhere on the stock. So uh, the template is not as well finished as it might have been, nor is it as well finished as it could be. But it's adequate for the work, and it does the job. Now, if you were doing a lot of cutting of very fine, thin woods, then there are particular tools for the task. And these are wire saws. Yeah, they really are. And these are used for cutting inlays and parquets and these sorts of things uh, by real craftsmen. Well, I don't do hardly any of that kind of work, so I don't have the specialized equipment, nor do I want to buy it. You can, if you wish, and do very intricate work indeed. But now, this is Hovey Smith. Reminding you to hunt what you eat and eat what you hunt. Be legal, be ethical, be safe, goodbye, God bless, and see you next time. Among my prize winning books are Extreme Muzzle Loading, Backyard Deer Hunting, Crossbow Hunting, and Practical Bow Fishing. And these are available as soft cover and ebooks. I also have an eight book ebook series out for 2013 14 including building or restoring your own muzzle odor. For more information on my books, blogs, and more than 350 videos, go to my website at www.hoveysmith.com. Good hunting and good eating from the outdoors. Goodbye and God bless.